A blessed morning, friends. Once again, welcome to the Porter's Gate online broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. Wherever you are, wherever you'll be connecting or joining us from this morning, once again, I want to say it's a great privilege and a pleasure to share this moment with you. Well, we are deep into uh, a period where we are beginning to round up the year and we need to begin to look into certain uh, uh, emphases and directions that we believe will help us to be aligned and of course to maintain the intentions of God and the counsels of God for our life as a community, you know, as a platform and of course as the church, the body of Christ. So it's on this note this morning that I will, I'm going to be sharing some things that I'm hoping will give us insight and direction particularly as we prepare our heart regarding uh, uh, the coming year, 2024. You know, uh, like I know that 2024 is just around the corner. And we've been sharing one or two uh, uh, nuggets that the Spirit of God has been, you know, emphasizing regarding uh, uh, this coming year. And I believe that many of the things that we are going to be saying all right, will bring, you know, relevancy to your life, will bring perspective, will allow you to readjust and, you know, uh, uh, reposition yourself. And of course, move into that point where what, what you stand for and what God, amen, has designed and ordained your life for will even become more, you know, uh, effective in terms of fulfillment. So we're going to be talking about the concept of recasting the vision, all right? We want to understand what it means to recast the vision. And of course, uh, um, you know, as the seasons changes, as the seasons unfold, the idea of recasting vision has to be understood within the context of you know, the nature of the days or the seasons that we have been ushered into. So how you understood vision, you know, in 20, uh, 2020, 2021, 20, 23, of course, amen, must have, you know, uh, shifted because the emphasis today, all right, uh, uh, across the globe, the, the, the reality on ground, of course, have, have shifted. So it's not like the vision has changed, all right, but the, the manner, the, the, the concept, the idea, all right, the, the values and the culture, if you will, the spirit of, uh, uh, um, you know, resolution that, you know, one requires to 
fulfill God's intention for today has to be amen, up, up, upgraded and updated, if you will, to how we looked at things, amen, maybe three, five years ago, or even 10 years ago, or even last year. Okay, so I'm hoping that this morning we'll be able to allow God, amen, to grant us insight and direction to how we must engage, all right, whatever uh, uh, ministry, calling, grace, mandate, heaven has given to you, no matter what you're doing, a calling, no matter where you are, you're fulfilling a career, all right, you're running a, 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 a business, whatever it is, you, all right, you, you're standing in a position that God has called you as a man, as a woman, you know, as a husband, all of this, amen, has to be done within certain, you know, concept, amen, and conduct of value system that will allow us to continue to thrive, amen, even within the resistance of the day. You will agree with me that uh, the days we're living, all right, uh, you know, are, are intense in terms of, you know, the challenges, the crisis, okay? So what manner of men we ought to be, what kind of, amen, women the Lord, amen, is calling us, you know, to, 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 to reflect and to project within the nature of these realities that are upon us. I'm sure you know that we're in the days of the end. So if we're tracking the days of the end or are we tracking the nearness of the kingdom of God, what kind of a lifestyle, what kind of a mindset, what kind of a belief pattern that we need to wear all right because if you want to engage i made a statement i'm not sure if i'll be able to you know find it but I, it's part of some of the notes that i'm just putting together in terms of you know what you know we are looking forward you know to bringing out in 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 the coming year excuse me i'm just trying to do one or two things here so let me see if i can find this statement because it's very profound even though i wasn't ready to talk about it this morning but let me see uh, if I can just, you know, give some nuggets here. I say seasons, seasons changes within the context of life's position. Season changes. All right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Season changes the context of life's position. All right. And when this happens, we must be willing to adopt all right, new border lines of our former location. We must be willing, all right, to, you know, to, to, what did I say? Uh, we must, yes, we must be willing to adopt new border lines. In other words, we must be willing to expand all right, our scope of thinking, our scope of reasoning. We must not allow, all right, you know, the, 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 the days that we have been brought into, of course, circumstance, situation, crisis, all right, political instability, all kinds of things, all right, are disrupting the order of life. So how you project, you know, vision, what you define as vision 10 years ago may not be able, all right, to, you know, to, to you know, to, to impact, that's the word, to impact, to make impact, the kind of impact that all right, you will expect, okay, or, or the kind of impact you made five years ago, let's say, let's say you started a business five years ago, or the way you were running your family five years ago, okay, and things were thriving, things were going well, all right, by the time you hit, amen, 2023, all right, moving towards 2024, you would have realized that things have become even more fierce, more challenging, more difficult, okay, so you cannot continue to run you know your home your business your ideas okay or yes whatever you're doing from the same pattern of how you used to think all right 20 years ago or 10 years ago or even two years ago all right so as 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 the season changes and we all know that okay the, when the season changes it impacts the earth there's an impact that is going on all right there's a negative impact that is going on upon the sons of men but yet there is a positive impact amen that is coming also from the presence of god from the throne of god all right and it's on that understanding that you and i amen need to align and position ourselves so that whatever god is saying to us whatever god is speaking to us amen should be the direction amen that we are towing all right because it's in that line that we will receive the right perspective the right understanding and of course the right resource all right yes farming was declared upon the land they said to the prophet they said go to the brook there's a word amen that was given to him go to the brook and what i'm sharing this morning okay is going to affect or you know impact every area of our life amen like i said either you be a man or be a woman or be you you know a leader be you a business 
you know, a, a entrepreneur or, you know, or you be a, a government, there will always be something that will be making demand on you, all right, to either say you're unable or compromise. So the more we understand the nature of the day, the more we need to change. Now listen to what I'm about to say. The more we must change or adjust or adapt our wine skin to that of what is known as heavenly life or heavenly values. And it's for this reason Paul said, all right, in Luke 26, I am not disobedient to the heavenly, amen, vision because heaven is where we source our vision. Heaven is where we source the provision, amen, to fulfill the vision in time. Remember that heaven and earth, amen, are two different realms, are two different reality. Their economy, hallelujah, differs. The economy of heaven is totally different from the economy, hallelujah, of the earth. The government of heaven is totally different from the government of the earth now you're supposed to be in between these two system in between these two order you understand this is very important and this is quite exciting to me as we as one begins to look at around the nature of the day most time we talk about understanding the nature of the day but what about amen the nature amen that heaven will have us to wear you see, David was able to defeat, amen, that which looks impossible, that which sounds impossible, that which can, you know, dwarf or in fact neutralize, you know, any human being just by the sight of Goliath. David, amen, you know, a small lad was able to defeat because he was not operating from an earthly position, even though he was an earthly man. Hallelujah. Who wore a heavenly mindset. And what I'm saying, all right, that in this season, we need to, amen, revamp. We need to, amen, adjust. We need to look more into, amen, the order, amen, of, of, of where we are sourcing strength and grace. If you are looking, if you are focusing, if you are fixative, amen, on the earth to want to fulfill heavenly things, you are going to be, amen, you're going to be, dis, you know, uh, discouraged. You're going to be disrupted, amen. You are going to be dispossessed. These are the you know words that the Lord okay is bringing you know to my spirit, and these are the words we've got to engage. And as we press towards 2024, I'm going to be sharing on Amen the concept of how we can maintain Amen our mandate in terms of occupying. You know, Jesus said, "Occupy till I come." Occupy till I come. What what, what does He want us to occupy? What are the things, amen, we need to know, we need to do in order to occupy? I just gave you a concept, amen, of, you know, of, of, of David. Everything that David did looks impossible in the natural human realm. But he was able, hallelujah, with the mindset, with the belief system, amen, with, you know, with the cloak, because he undressed himself, amen, from, you know, the, 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 the cloak or, you know, the armory of a rejected, amen, king. Saul was a king, but he had no, he had no more legitimacy, he had no more power, he had no more authority. And that is how many churches, all right, are functioning today. Even though they, they seem to look, they seem to look lanky, they seem to have power, they seem to have presence, but they have lost the presence of God and that's how many homes family you know men and women are functioning all right their strength is in the arm of flesh you know uh, you know it was it was you know Saul that said to David you want to fight this thing okay let me give you my armor no 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 if your if your armor can do it all right if your cloak could, could do it why didn't you go as a king why didn't you amen uh, you know reflect the glory of your kingship you see, there's a king that is there that is rejected, that has become obsolete, amen. The heavens, you know, approver, amen, has been taken from him. And there's a generation rising up, amen, called David. They don't have an authority from the human realm. They don't have any influence. They don't have, you know, something to show forth, amen, in the natural, all right, to say that they, you know, they command, you know, influence and power and authority. David had no army. Amen. When you look at David in the natural realm, amen, he, he's not the kind of a person that should stand before Goliath. And I'm saying this, that the challenges before us, the challenges ahead of us, amen, are a reflection of this story. Amen. And yet God raised David, hallelujah, because the wisdom of God, hallelujah, is going to be challenging the wisdom of, of this world. The Bible says, amen, the wisdom of this world is going to come to naught. 
So, but if you and I do not have a sense of clarity, we don't have a sense of identity, we don't know who we are, we are not living from the order, amen, of the value system of the kingdom of God. Whatever we term or we call, you know, apostolic in terms of how we execute. Remember, the apostolic, amen, is the pointer where we get to execute. But if we don't have, amen, that life that is in sync, amen, with God, we don't have a life that, amen, is connected, that is alive line, amen, in the spirit of the prophetic with the heart of God. We do not have, amen, a passion and a desire, amen, for a worship lifestyle that we found, amen, in, in somebody like John, amen, who was so close to the Lord, who laid his head, amen, on the, on the chest of our Lord. If our heart is not beating after the Lord, amen, the reason why David was able to defeat, the reason why David was able to conquer, amen, the reason why David was able to thrive, the reason why David was known, amen, as one of the great test leader, amen, in the nation of Israel, amen, is because of his proximity with God. So I'm saying that as the enemy attack us, which of course, amen, is to drag us away, is to pull us away from the presence of God so we can trust in the arm of the flesh. The more we do that, the more we're going to be defeated. Even as a church. But the more we know that even within the crisis, we must run to God, not run from God. All right, and I'm talking about crisis, amen, that may pan out from all levels economical crisis, amen, political crisis, amen, yes, you know, personal crisis, relational crisis, whatever crisis, financial crisis, whatever crisis that may be coming to us in this end of days, and there will be many, amen, that will be coming because the purpose of those crises is to test our allegiance, is to test our commitment, amen, is to test who we trust, what we trust, some trust in the arm of flesh, some trust in the leg of horses, our trust is in the name of the Lord, that is not just some statement, that is a present reality, amen, of where we are positioned to trust in the name of the Lord means to live a life, amen, via, amen, the value system of Christ, where the mind of Christ, are you getting the point? somebody tracking what we're talking about so what the lord is saying in this in this season is for us to move further and begin to thrive into you know the uncertainties of the days that are before men is that we have to constantly change our wine skin our wine skin has to change this is how we begin to understand how to recast the vision if you look back to that scripture that we often quote, all right, you know, we must, we must, you know, we must, we must not, you know, we must cast the vision or we must, you know, we must run with the vision. We must write down the vision. If you look at that, you know, context of that scripture, you will see that that scripture, amen, actually came out of a rebuke. <laughs> Out of a correction, out of a, a, you know, a prophet that is being reprimanded, a prophet who has been dispossessed, shifted, amen, from his position, which of course, you know, is, is, the, is the plan of the enemy. The plan of the enemy, whatever you may be going through right now, amen, the plan of the enemy, amen, is to distract you, amen, is to dislocate you, hallelujah, is to shift you away from where God, hallelujah, has positioned you. Because where God has positioned you, amen, be it amen in 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 a secular place or in you know in a spiritual whatever it is wherever god has positioned you is the place of your influence is the place of your strength is the place amen of your competence is the place where you're going to be blessed but if the enemy can shift you away from that amen through the challenges of life through persecution through suffering through needs then he's defeated you and that's what the enemy has done to the church in the past you know few decades the church has been shifted has been moved away just like Abacook was when you are moved away from where you have been located you're gonna complain you know that you know that I know that <laughs> All right? Because now you are no longer a man focus on the perspective. You no longer have the perspective of heaven. You're seeing things through the eyes of the world. And then you will be you will be dealing with issues of justice and injustice. It's not fair. It's not fair. Why, why is that person being promoted and I'm not being promoted? Why is that person being blessed? I'm not I'm not being blessed. What is going on? You I mean everything now becomes about you. 
but you have forgotten what God, amen, wants to do through your life. You have forgotten that God's timing, amen, is not, uh, you know, your timing. That your timing, amen, does not work with God's timing. Hallelujah. Yes. So these are days where they want us, amen, to relocate ourselves. And that is why I'm saying we're in a season where we want to do what? We want to recast the vision. We want to recast. We want to understand, hallelujah, yes, the mandate of God for our life. Listen, you cannot recast a vision that is born out of the flesh. You can, If you're writing down the vision, this will be a time you, a period where you're going to be hearing people say, write down the vision. What vision are you writing down? <laughs> Maybe we should start from there. Write down the vision. Excuse me. Which vision are you writing down? Is it an idea that comes to your mind? Is this something that was born out of an ambition? Is this something all right, that came out of your own you know, desire? All right? And of course you target. Anybody can wake up tomorrow and target anything a vision. You know, time is what really proves if something is a vision or an ambition. Time, you know, what? Let me, sh I've shared this several times. There were things that we birthed years ago while I was in Nigeria. All right? You know, women's ministry, you know, a, a men's ministry, all kinds of things that we birthed. And people who thought they have the, they have the resource, they saw the, they saw, they saw the initiative, they like it. Rather than them partnering with me, and this is something that we've got to deal with in the body of Christ, particularly in Africa, because many of the things we call vision are born out of ambition. They are born out of insecurity. They are born. born out of out of the heart of God because many people who claim to have something you know to carry out for God don't even have a heart for God don't even have a desire for God they are not a people amen who are known to be people of prayer when you're a, when you're a person of prayer God will give you things amen God will give you that which is your own so many today in fact if I were to say 99% of many of many you know most of the churches out there are just a carbon copy of another church you know, church is like a DNA. You can't duplicate it. <laughs> Do you hear me? Church is like a DNA. You cannot duplicate it. So is that which God, amen, gives to you. If God gives you, amen, a blueprint for a ministry, for something to be carried out, amen, there is, there is something about that thing, amen, that is uniquely you. So many of those people, like I was saying back then, they saw the things that I was running with, they hijacked it ministry many of them they've got money of course i don't have the kind of financial muscle but this is what they got the money so they ran with those things and you know some people were calling my attention so you say what are these people are doing in fact some of them were so bold that all they they even used the name i was using what can i do what does isaiah know <laughs> that's how you know that things amen that people claim to be projecting most time are not from God. So when you say write down the vision, amen, who is the source of that vision? How did you get that vision? Because you can write down your ambition and call it a vision. And this is the reason why many, okay, when they get to a time of crisis where things are difficult, they, they what? They leave the thing, they go look for something else to do. They go look for something else to do. God have, amen, one single vision for us. And that vision, amen, has a multifaceted dimension as you grow and increase in the vision. So, amen, because you see, vision is life, oh God. Vision is not just about doing something. Vision is life, is the reason for existence. In 2025, 2030, hallelujah, if the Lord tarries, I will still be doing, amen, what I'm doing but from a different context, like I say, like I said earlier on, context changes, amen, our operations of vision. The vision never changes, but the context, hallelujah, of the day, the context of the season, the context of the epoch, the context of the decade, hallelujah, will cause us to wear a new mindset, if you will, a new wine skin that will allow us to thrive within the crisis, within the limitation, within the dispossession. Nobody can dispossess me out of that which God has called me to do. Are you getting this, friends? In a million years, I cannot be dispossessed. But if I allow myself to be, I will be. 
because that is part of the end the plan of the enemy what is the plan of the enemy it's come to what to steal what is he stealing you think he wants to steal your money <laughs> you think the devil is after your money <laughs> no he's come to steal the vision he's come to kill the vision he has come to destroy the vision because if he can kill, if he can destroy the vision, amen, then he has destroyed you, amen, as a leader, as a voice. Now, now listen to this. There are those who really do not understand what I'm talking about. They don't have a sense of what I'm, because they are not, they are not awakened yet. So they don't even have an awareness that there's something that God, amen, called a vision that ought to drive their life. They are basically just surviving. And that's why they don't, they will do everything. They will move from here and there. They will try this. They will try that. These are people who are still fast asleep. In fact, they are snoring. They are, they are not yet awakened. So I'm assuming that, you know, the things that I'm talking about, amen, I'm related to those at least who are awakened who have a desire that hey God has a plan for my life God has something for me all right yes we live in a world where people in fact those that we thought are even awakened are falling back to sleep because when you look at their life when you look at the fruits when you look at the things they're doing when you look at the values that they are subscribing to you ask yourself what's what's wrong with you yes so we have to understand or rather we're dealing with different kind of people amen you know in the church we're dealing with different kind of christians we're dealing with different even among those of us who call ourselves ecclesia all right our understanding of what the ecclesia is is still far-fetched from amen the very order the very you know image the the the, the culture the values amen of, of of heaven because you cannot talk about the ecclesia if you don't have the revelation of christ which means that you cannot function within the context of his kingdom like i said jesus is the gateway amen, to the kingdom it's not the other way around the kingdom is not the gateway to jesus no jesus is the gateway to the kingdom so if you don't have amen, a relational you know experience you're not tracking you're not walking you're not growing you're not moving into christ listen to me Till Jesus return physically back on earth, we will still be seeking to understand him. One of the greatest mistakes that the church, particularly the ecclesia, the apostolic ecclesia are making is to have assumed that they know Jesus, that they have an understanding of who Christ is. And the more we, 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 we move with that idea, the more amen, it becomes difficult for us to even function within the reality of what we call, amen, the Ecclesia. You see, the fact that I don't come around and, and tag everything kingdom or tag everything Ecclesia or I don't use the term, that doesn't mean that I'm not, I'm not living, I'm not walking, hallelujah, I'm not moving within the culture, within the life. Everything that we do on this platform, amen, are driven by heavenly order. And that's why the enemy came and, 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 and released all kinds of arrows and said, kill that man, bring him down. There are too many life attached to him. There are too many ministry attached to him. There are too, too, too many visions that his life is sourcing. Kill him, cut the head, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. But the Lord had mercy on me. The dear friends, I said the Lord had mercy on me. It was mercy. And I'm very aware of that. And it's that mercy, hallelujah, that have launched me back and said, hey, continue to be the voice of one crying in the wilderness of the nations. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight this path. That's my mandate. So, your ministry, you're tracking something for God. You don't know where you stand in this end of days as a man or as a woman. When you come to our platform, we we'll align you. We we'll file you so that you're cutting edge. Amen. It's not dull. We we'll help you to understand what life is all about. That, that outside of Christ, there is no living. Because only in his life that we see light. In his light, we see light. You understand? That only in Christ we live and move and have our being. So Christ, Jesus Christ to us is not just some religious expression. It's not some Christian, you know, you know, terminology. 
It's not some, you know, words we, you know, we, we, we declare to make ourselves feel good. That even, amen, in the darkest of the night, that even in our prison, amen, that we wear the mindset of Christ that we can sing and rejoice in our prison. So that, amen, what God wants to do within that prison becomes manifest. The days are going to get more darker. The days are going to get more uncertain. The days are going to get more fierce. The battles are going to get more fierce. But as we continue to wear Jesus Christ, as we continue to allow him, amen, to be the definer of our value system, as we continue to rise up, amen, in the philosophy of a heavenly life, that we are no longer, amen, yes, being captured or limited by the narrative that surrounds, amen, our environment. It could be an environment of where we are born, amen, the environment of our nation of our society amen it could be the environment of a political you know you know a, a toggery you know uncertainty all kinds of issues going on around us that we will have to rise up hallelujah and become that house and become that mountain and become that voice amen and become that order hallelujah that when people look into our life and see what is going on as we show them the values and the standard of the kingdom then they will stream up come let us go up Are you listening this morning? This is what we mean when we say recasting the heavenly vision. We have to make it clear. You know, before I began the broadcast this morning, I just said recasting the vision. And the Lord said to me, that statement is not complete. You have to contextualize the vision. It has to be heavenly. Because, amen, worldly people too are talking about vision. If you go read many of the books that worldly leaders have written, they talk about vision. We've done, you know, series of teaching early this year, you know, towards the beginning, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, yes, towards the beginning of the year, we did series of teaching, amen, on understanding vision. In fact, maybe some of those teachings, I need to repost them because they're so profound. We try to understand vision, the objective of vision, the focus, amen, what it means to, you know, to, to begin to fulfill, to begin to bring forth, to begin to birth. Every vision, hallelujah, requires a womb. Because a vision begins from a seed. But you all, you all know that we can't, we can't eat seed. You all know, amen, that we can't live on a seed. But seed is just the potential, hallelujah, yes, of a bounty harvest. Every forest starts with a seed. Starts with a seed. They say despair. Do not despise, amen, the days of little, little beginning. We don't want to end little, but we want to start little. We want to understand what little is. Do not despise the days. There are days where that thing will look. I mean, you know, like I know, that we all came from a seed, a spam. That thing can be flushed into the toilet. That's why governments across the nation, they're promoting this. They can't, they don't have the power, hallelujah, of sight. That when a seed goes into a womb, amen, that that is a potential life. They say, kill that thing before it's born. No, God says, this is the process. You cannot kill a process and yet you want to have an harvest. And I'm excited. I'm not just pro-life, hallelujah. I'm pro-kingdom. The kingdom of God is like a seed. So when you live in a society where the government says, all right, we can kill seed just because we don't like how that seed, all right, was received. And that's not to say that we must promote, amen, you know, all kinds of issues in society. The issue of raping women and doing all kinds of... No, we don't promote that. We should not promote that. In fact, there should be harsh, harder punishment on men who take advantage, who rape. Amen. Yes. It's not just, you know, even men. Listen, we live in a society where fathers, amen, are, are raping their own daughters. It's a crazy world we live in. But if a seed, amen, yes, is received... No matter how, remember that when a spam is re released, they say there are millions, close to a billion spam released. You can't see that thing, 
But within that thing that you can't see, amen, is a potential life. I mean, like I said, the battle has, 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 been, has, been, has begun even before you were born. If you can make it into the world, no matter, amen, where you are dropped. Because those are the things that limit us. I was born and I was dropped, all right, by the gutter side. I was born and I was dropped, you know, in the dustbin. I was born, but I grew in an environment where I had to, you know, go to school with bare foot. I didn't eat. I mean, I can tell you, you know, the challenges around my growing up. But the Lord, hallelujah, you understand, who allowed me to make it into the world, in, the fact that you made it into the world means that you had a you had a breakthrough spirit. Do you know how many spam died? But you made it. Everything about your life, amen, is the formation of a seed. That's why we give to the things of God. Is a seed. When you sow a seed, amen. Listen, don't look at the people. Don't look at the man. Don't, no. Of course, we must know where we sow our seed. But when God tells you sow a seed, there's a principle. There's a, there's a spiritual principle that is in motion. God is the first giver. Even God himself operated by the seed. For God so loved the world that he gave. Zabayakayan. One of the ways you break away from limitation, hallelujah, is by understanding the principle, hallelujah, that governs the seed. Your future, your destiny, the things God has called you into that you're going to do, hallelujah, may still be in that formation of a seed. But don't let that discourage you. Don't let that, amen, yes, put you in a state where, because everybody loves manifestation. I, I told us a few days ago, Look at how South Africa is just gone crazy with you know the 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 the, the rug, rug, rugby world cup you know championship. Look at what those I mean those guys they brought glory to this nation. We like it or not, we cannot we cannot you know you know push that aside. Those guys did something. Those rugby guys did something. Can you see how everybody everybody is just people love success, but you go read about the story. Of how those guys, you know, they, they beat the best. They beat the best. And that is the same example of what God, amen, is calling us into. It's not going to be easy to thrive in this last day. But if you will give that extra, if you will push, amen, if you will go back, amen, to God and say, what is the vision? Show me. Show me the path. If you will listen, if you will respond, if you will align yourself, hallelujah, to the training. We did a series of teaching, you know, a few months back, amen, on discipline. My son, do not despise the discipline of your father. No seed guess. To win like David. No seed gets to stand. Hallelujah. He understand. <laughs> I'm able to challenge. I mean, Jesus came into this world as a seed. Look at that. Think about that. At the age of 12, he began to manifest just potential. <laughs> not, the, not the full manifest. Just, just a little. Age of 12. All the professors, all the doctors and the lawyers, amen, yes, who are Pharisees and Sadducees and all those guys who thought they knew something. He beat all of them hands down at the age of 12. That's why I said some of us, we need to begin to rediscover God for a reason, to discover ourselves. <laughs> like I always say, you don't know who you are. You think you know yourself. No, you are living another man's dream. You think you know yourself. Amen. You are living, you know, a script that has been written down, written out. Hallelujah. Yes. For you by some ungodly, perverted, you know, you know, system. And many of us are still living the dream of other people. We, 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 when we commit ourselves to something, no, there's something in our brain that is driving us. It's not God. It's not heavenly. The insecurity, all right, the lies, the false identity they have given to us has made us to come up with all kinds of things. We call it a dream. We call it a vision. That was so until it collided with God on the road to Damascus. 
When he collided with God, they brought him to his real self. This is who you are. <laughs> what you thought you are is not who you are. They've put a wrong thing in your mind and you're succeeding with that identity. Like, I'm a successful man. Oh, uh, uh, it, you know, she's a successful. No, no, no. You are not successful until you collide with God. In fact, you're a failure. No matter the wealth, no matter the money, no matter. Because only God defines for us what success is. Who is successful? You but a breath that is to them tomorrow you're no more. You think you understand success? People have lived their life in assumption, in presumption. Living our life in falsehood. That's why when anything comes to challenge us, to steer our waters, we fight. We resist. No, because, <laughs> you know, your, your, your denial mechanism, amen, is being attacked. That's why some people can't stand the message we preach. It's too hard for them. It's too difficult for them. This is a hard say. Who can bear it? We have not even got, listen. I'm, I'm very aware of how I'm passing. We're still giving scalable, scalable truth. Because I know, all right, if we begin, to, you know, I know the society God has sent me to. I'm very aware. You know, when I began, you know, at the early, you know, early days of my ministry in South Africa, you know, when I came with a powerful, strong apostolic. I said, no, this thing is too, it's too, it's too chewy, it's too hard. This thing is like a bone. I had to put that message, put it in a shelf. and say, God, okay, help me. Help me to understand. You see, if God will understand the context of the environment, am I saying there are no apostles and prophets, you know, doing great work? They're doing it within the context of their, of their mandate. But, you know, what God has given to me and the kind of a message God has called me to do, all right, I cannot run that, all right, in this kind of a template that the wine skin is still rigid, that the wine skin, all right, is still being defined all right by the old mindset by the old apartheid mindset i hope you understand that apartheid is not just something political apartheid also it may impact the spiritual configuration hallelujah of the people apartheid impact amen the belief system you understand till today you understand you talk about you know you know uh, 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 you know blacks against blacks you talk about colors against color I mean, there are all kinds of things happening and we are asking ourselves, but how did we get here? No, the real issue, we have not really dealt with them. That is why I believe that the destiny of this nation is not in the hand of politicians. Not even the, God knows what they call, what they call them now. The patriotic alliance. That is just an opportunistic, opportunist. Let me repeat it again. An opportunistic, or oh, you understand? Yes. Philosophy. Okay, you use a narrative to build a narrative and you create war, you put you bring heads together. The problem of South Africans are not for, are not foreigners. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. In fact, if South Africa begins to humble and understand the process of humility, what you need to do is to learn from this foreigner. But when you portray, you know, a prideful attitude, you know, I know better than you, you are in, you are in my country. You don't, you can't tell me, you can't teach me because that's the, that's the mindset I have seen both from the church and even from the business world. Why do you think somebody like Vusi, this guy got Vusi, all right? Yeah, he's thriving all across the nation because he knows how to enter the nation. He knows how to enter city. He knows how to welcome, amen, values from regions, from realms outside his boundary. <laughs> Listen. South Africa, you want to make it in this end of days. You've got to be able to break away from that identity that says all you need is an identity card. No, you need a passport into the nation. You need to go. You need to see. You need. Oh, God, help me. Let me not even begin to start with South Africa this morning. Wow, I'm sent here. I'm a seed sent here earlier to help a people, to help the land, to, you know, to, to break the fallow ground so we can receive. Our identity, our belief system of South Africa <laughs> is still in the past. And that identity is obsolete. We live in a global village. We live in a global world. No matter who you are, you can no longer claim South Africa belongs to us. No, the people controlling this economy are not even within this economy. Karabayada. 
There are those that when they speak, the government will listen. Why? Because they cut the shot. So let's not be opportunistic. We need people who understand, amen, organic transformation. Who really have the heart, amen, who are ready to roll the sleeve and engage the mindset of the people and really engage, amen, yes, the ideologies that have kept the people in prison, amen. That, hey, listen to this. The reason why you're fighting somebody else is because, amen, you yourself, you see yourself as a threat. I'm not distracted. I'm still in line because whatever we teach, whatever we, whatever we talk about must be able to impact people's life amen on ground the word must become flesh and dwell among men we must see the work grow up amen yes they said jesus what you're doing is good at the age of 12 but we want you to grow within the process we want you because every priest hallelujah must be taken from among his own so he was among his own but he was not contaminated by his own you see I'm very aware of where I'm where I come from. I'm a Nigeria, a proud Nigeria. And I know the narrative. I know both the positive and the negative narrative are around that nation, but those things don't define me. I know the narrative earlier that's been built around a man blackness, the, the black skin. Those things don't define me. I still thrive. There are things, first of all, you've got to understand. And that is why, amen, coming to Christ is the gateway, amen, to the beginning of your freedom. We need to let the pastors know, the apostles and the prophets know, amen, that they need to reteach the, amen, the message of redemption and salvation, amen, from a kingdom, you know, value system. That if any man be in Christ, not just in a church, not just in an organization, just like a man being in an organization called DA, an organization called you know ANC or Patriotic Alliance or EFF, amen, does not bring freedom or liberation to the nation. No, it is the spiritual philosophy that 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 informs your template of thinking and reasoning that you bring to the table, hallelujah, that pushes, amen, the value system of the nation to that point where they begin to thrive. All of the party have their own manifesto that comes from somewhere come comes from somewhere many of them amen are calmest you cannot build amen the identity that will change a nation uh, you understand yes on on capitalism and calmest and you think you're going to thrive no you're making a big mistake look at how those people amen i mean look at people like uh, um EFF, for example no no we we, we, we believe in Kalmax, but we hate the Jew. But the Jew, amen. But Kal Kalman comes from, amen, the, you know, the Jewish nation. Oh, come on. Let's not even begin to go into all of that. My point is we want to understand what vision is. We want to understand what vision is. The vision is not an ambition. That you tag, that you tag, amen, vision. You can call, you can call anything by whatever name you want to call it. If, it's, if, if that thing does not subscribe to the value, amen, to the nature, to the culture, to the identity, amen, of that name. Remember, name is a nature. Name is not just a tag of identification. Name is a nature. When God gives you a name, hallelujah, he is saying, hallelujah, go and thrive in the understanding of this nature, this character. Amen. When a Jew gives you a name, just like from where I come from, when they give you a name, they don't just give you a name because, well, oh, that sounds nice. No, that name, amen, is connected to something beyond what men can see. So every time you call that name, you invoke the spirit, hallelujah, that governs that order. So you can say, well, this is a vision. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Time will tell <laughs> and that's what led me to all the things i've said time will tell time is the definer time is the judge if it's a vision or an ambition if it's an ambition you will have to thrive you will have to strive you will have to do everything within your human ability your human wisdom your falling suke amen to keep it moving to keep it going because god is not going to back it no 
It doesn't waste his seed. God has not wasted his seed on that which the mind of man built. Hallelujah. I mean, you wake up, you'll have thought. The, the years come to an end. So what are we going to be saying next year? What, what, what direction are we going to be towing? This is where you know if God is in, involved. No, the things that I'm saying right now are not a recycle message. I sat down, the Lord began to download the next thing he needs me to do and say regarding the days ahead. I was glad. That is the power of vision. It's self-sustaining. What do I mean by that? Because vision is life. Amen. Vision, hallelujah, continue to generate life and energy within itself. That's how we know God is involved. That is what you call, amen, a nuclear power. Nuclear power are self-generated. Once you set everything, amen, in place, you understand? You see some of these submarine, they are run by, amen, nuclear energy. That's why they can be on the sea for the next 10, 10 years, just going around the sea, amen. They don't need to go and refer some, because what it takes to keep that thing going, amen, is within itself, it's nuclear. La Baba Shikayanda. That's why it takes people who have mastered the act, amen, of self-constraint, self-restraint, to handle such power nuclear. Some of us want to handle God's power. <laughs> and the next thing that happens to you, amen, the next enemy that comes to you, the next person that comes against you, you want to, you want to, you want to wipe them out of, out of the earth. Because we've got nuclear power. You don't understand. With great power comes great what? Great responsibility and accountability. That's why God will not give you that thing until you've come to the end of yourself. They've given you a vision, but the character, the ability, amen, the quality of lifestyle to maintain, to handle, to manage, amen. Vision is power. To maintain that power, you've got to grow up. They say, Jesus, we see your potential. But you still need to grow. Come to the age of maturation. 30. But we see what you can do at age 12. I mean, he made a statement. When his parents were looking for him. He said, but you should have known that I must be about my father's business. Everyone should be about your daughter at age 3, age 5, age, 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 you know, age 6, 10. Your son should begin to understand what it means to live for Christ. It's not a spiritual language. It's a call, amen, to be initiated into the order that whatever they're doing, amen, be you want to be a pianist like my son. You want to be, amen, the best, you know, you know, long tennis player like my daughter. Whatever you want to be, it has to be done within the context, amen, of the vision of heaven. Meaning that that grace, that gift, that talent that is given to you should be projecting and, pro and, and promoting the values of heaven. This is not trying to be the best so you can be some celebrity. We have celebrity pastors, celebrity, you know, you know, uh, a first lady. God help you. Shame on all of you. Projecting yourself, it's you, you using the gift of God. That's why God said to them on that day, I never knew you. Yes, you, you use my gift, you abuse my resource, but you never did my bidding. The key is to stand before him, is to know him. Knowing him is not what you knew yesterday. What, 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 what face is he showing today? What is his heartbeat for today? What is the mind of God for today? Why is he going tomorrow? Are you willing to go with him? Or are you just willing to stay on the nice path, on the good path? There will be times that he will, he will need to go through Jericho. There will be times he will need to go through Samaria. There will be times, hallelujah, he will need to stand, hallelujah, at the gate, hallelujah of Gennesaret or wherever you understand you will have to go with him there will be time he will need to go and face amen the Sahendri there will be time amen they will have to arrest him and there will be times you will need to follow him to get so many are you willing are you willing to carry your cross and follow him wherever he goes or you just you just like the nice parts 
They like the miracle part. This thing is not about your narrative. It's not about what fits you, what suits you. It's about following the lamb wheresoever he goes. These are the ones who follow the lamb wheresoever he goes. For the garments are not stained. Are you with me, friends? What are we doing? We're tracking the vision. We're moving towards the place where we can become more effective, more productive. And that will require that we become even more resilient. That our vision, amen, is not dull. That we remain calibrated. That we remain, amen, resourceful. That everything that we do, amen, is done according to the book. What do I mean by that? It's done according to the values of the scripture. That we are not seeking, amen, to use anything unduly. We are not seeking to take advantage of people unduly. We are not seeking, amen, to take advantage of the ignorance of the people. We are not seeking to take advantage, amen, yes, of, you know, of situation. That we represent Christ. You see, God is not about the end. It's about the means to the end. If you are not dead to this world, the things of the world will charm you until you bow the knees. Let me repeat myself. If you are not dead to this world, then the world is not dead to you. It means that the world can use, amen, its cosmos to compel you to bow the knees and you, you will bow. You know why? Because you are born into this world. This is why it, you were required to die daily. The reason for that is when the tempter comes to tempt you with the riches of this world, with fame, because we can claim that we are fulfilling vision for God and all we are doing indirectly, amen, or subliminally, amen, is gaining fame for ourselves. Listen, there are certain vision that till you die, you will do them in hiding. Oh. Oh, Jesus, help me here. Till you die, nobody will know you. But heaven will know you. The angels will be like this. Because there are certain visions you have to do behind the curtain. So if your ideology of vision is to take the stage, to be known, to be popular, to be the voice. John was the voice of one. <laughs> In our day, when you are the voice of one, they will say you're a failure. <laughs> you know how many people have called me a failure? You know how many people have tried to talk me out of what I'm doing? I don't even understand myself. I only understand that I hear the voice of God. He says, stay here. You stay there. You see, my success is not defined by the platform men gives to me. For this reason, I was sent. Do you know the reason? Let's look at some things. Now, I, I want to read a scripture let me see if I have that scripture somewhere here. I'm going to read this. There's a scripture I want to read. Uh, Alright, but you'll find it in Act 26. Act 26, 19. Paul was saying to King Agrippa. He says, for this reason, alright, I was sent and I'm not disobedient to the heavenly heavenly not earthly read it you find it open your bible you find it there I was not dis meaning that we can be disobedient to the heavenly vision heaven has a vision for the earth and that vision may not align to how you <laughs> understand vision how vision has been defined and narrated to us Many of the things our church is called vision are ambition. 
they are self-driven that is why we cannot amen manifest the glory of God establish amen the kingdom of God in our backyard in our backyard not even to talk about our community because heaven does not support that thing we're doing you see, when we're talking about vision, we've got to look at all of these angles. The danger of the end time church is to presume. And to presume based on the result you are seeing on ground. Sometimes the result you are seeing on ground, amen, is a manifestation of the rejection of God, of the disapproval of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The times we live in are times of distraction, disruption, and dispossessions. These are days of distraction. Amen. Disruption and dispossession. You've got to watch these three Ds. Distraction, disruption, and dispossession. All of these are geared to us. Amen. Shifting you from your cutting edge. Your cutting edge is produced by the functioning of your vision. Is somebody still alive? Are you listening to me? I'm going to begin a round up because... I just want this to be scalable so that right, next time we come, we, we pick it up from there and we'll just see how far we can go. All right. So that by the time we enter into maybe January, you have a better understanding. Listen to this. A vision is not what man can give to you. Nobody can give you a vision. You, you came to this world with a vision. What you need to do is to discover it. To discover it and oftentimes God's vision amen in our life if we have good parenting they will help us they will align us they will build us amen and and resource us towards the line of fulfilling but if we don't have that that doesn't mean that amen we cannot discover it that is why God God brings people across our way you see Mary and Joseph <laughs> Oh God, I need to do a whole series on Mary and Joseph. Because without them, Jesus, I'm sure, would not have been able at the age of 33 finish his work. That was because of the sightedness of his parent. That's why in this last day, we need parents who are sighted, who are not captured by Babylon. Babylon put all kinds of pressure in your life, put all kinds of work and distraction just for that seed remember he has always been after the seed joseph and mary <laughs> dangerous people dangerous spirit the guy can hear god just when jesus was born they said they are coming to kill the boy take the boy down to egypt <laughs> egypt god forbid bad thing in our day parents would have said i plead the blood of jesus we are not going to egypt Satan get in fact Gabriel would have turned to <laughs> would have turned to Lucifer. You know, Joseph would have been fighting, you know, in the name of Jesus. We're not going down to Egypt. No, 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 no. God has delivered us from Egypt. Jesus went to Egypt. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just excited. The power of parenting, and that's why when God puts leaders in your life that act as a parent. You don't treat them like something else. You accord them the value, the respect, because God has placed them to watch over you. That's what the Bible calls, amen? Overseers. They oversee you. That's the meaning of overseer. It's not the one that sits in a big chair and lord it over the people. No. The Bible said they watch over your soul. I can't take you to where you don't want to go. So these are this our sight has to be calibrated. Take the boy, Mary. And Mary did not. If it's our sister in our day, what do you think they would have done? Uh -uh. Joseph, 
if you want to go down to Egypt, you go down to Egypt. Remember, we were enslaved in Egypt. We are not going to Egypt. Hey, there would have been war in the house of uh, Joseph. Yes, because, you know, Mary refused to listen to Joseph. Don't we have sisters like that? I carried this child in my womb for 12, 12 months, no, nine months. I'm not going to listen to you. They were in sync. Remember, the seed was not Joseph's seed, but, but he parented Jesus. He was there. He took that boy. Nobody, no man in our day can function, can do the work that Joseph carried out for God. Hello? How many messages have you heard today where the whole series, amen, is on Joseph? No, when we talk about Joseph, we talk about the Old Testament Joseph. There's another Joseph. The father of Jesus, who was the body, who was the you know the house that Christ, Amen, was able to display and showcase heaven's intentions in the earth. Hallelujah. Well, I'm done. Somebody remind me next time we come. Let's pick it from this point. <laughs> then I know if you're following me. <laughs> Amen, friends. What are we doing? We are recasting the vision. We're trying to understand. You see, so you can see that what I'm talking about is not just limited to what we stand for here at the Potter's Gate. It is what we stand for, amen, as the corporate body, as the corporate entity of the Ecclesia of Christ in the earth. What we're talking about will impact every area of our life. And I hope that we're already adjusting ourselves and our perspective because God is speaking to us let's not be disobedient to the heavenly vision heavenly vision does not require your sweat it demands your obedience your total obedience heavenly vision does not require your energy uh -uh. You can't touch that heavenly order when you are sweating. They remove their hand. It's not heavenly. <clears throat> they just want you to obey and follow. And it's from this point we will begin to understand what it means to occupy till it comes. Because that's where we're going. Alright? We want to occupy till it comes. We want to be strategically positioned to occupy our place. Like I said, some of our work to occupy with me just to focus your time on that child. Focus your energy on that. They say, Mary, did you know? Did you know that you are carrying, amen, that the seed you are carrying is God? Mary, did you know? Many of us don't even have a sight. We don't have insight over the seed God has given to us. That's why we treat the, the, the seed, you know, anyhow. Either the spiritual seed we carry or the physical seed that come out of our body. We have no sight. We allow Babylon to define them. We allow Babylon to control them. We allow amen, Babylon, amen, yes, to control them. And then we start complaining. Why is my child behaving like this? But you, you out of ignorance, allow that will happen so friends as we move towards the days of the end we've got to understand what it means to occupy and i'm going to be defining all of that what is me to occupy what are we occupying listen what you don't occupy will be occupied by something else by someone else there are no vacuums in life there are no vacuums in the spirit and there are no vacuums amen even in the physical realm Wherever you find a vacuum, there is a fight to occupy it. And the, the kind of world we live in today, Babylon is brutal. Babylon wants to control everything. Babylon wants to buy everything. You are still working. While you are working, doing your work, committed working, another company has already bought your company. <laughs> 
You are still working. You don't know that you now you belong to another owner, but you are still working. And they, they're still paying you salary, but another person that oh, there are realms, there are battles, there are things going on above your head that you are not even aware of. You want to be complaining. Many companies have been bought over. Just like you know, companies have been bought over. There are churches that have been bought over. Visions, amen. I jack giving them something else to preach. Homes bought over. Dispossessed. What manner of men are we supposed to be in this season? Are you so persuaded about the vision that you will not allow somebody to buy it? God help us. Lord, we honor you. Friends, if you have not subscribed to our channel on YouTube, please do. I beg of you. <laughs> so, what has come over you? No, we also want to grow the channel. So, if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe to our channel because God is using this channel to speak life, to bring clarity and direction to nations. And please do support us financially because we want to do great things for God in the coming year and we thank everyone who in one way or the other are helping to raise you know my hand in this work grace to you kudos to you I appreciate you but for those who have not support but you've been so blessed from our channel please think about it start thinking about it you know if you don't put this thing at the forefront of your mind you're not going to do it you take it for granted. You see, as I'm speaking, some people will be leaving. Don't leave here. This is the sweat of certain people that are in manifestation. Certain people make this thing happen. Let's commit ourselves to give to the advancement of undiluted prophetic amen, initiative. Do it for God. Say, so how can I be a blessing? What are the channels? What are the means? If I have seed, what can I, you know, where can I put it? Send me a message. Or next time I'll show you the account. You do that, please. Bible says, ask, it shall be given to you sick. We ask the Lord, but God will use people. So if you're benefiting from what we're talking about, for a whole year you're benefiting from this truth. Wherever you are across the earth, you can be a blessing financially to us. Thank you for praying. Thank you for standing with me, particularly in my time of need and crisis. But we are moving into uncharted territories. We want to do great things. We want to remain relevant. We want to remain on the cutting edge. We want to work on many materials that will allow us to continue to bring perspective. You know, a few days ago, I, you know, well, for, for a while now, I've been posting some of our nuggets, you know, on, on TikTok. You know, a few days ago, I had close to 4,500 people, you know, view some of the messages that we've been talking about. 4,500, just on one message. People want to hear more of what we're talking about. So please, I encourage you to encourage me so we can continue. You want to hear more of these things? Remember, no holds back. We are not holding back. We want to continue to proclaim and declare. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. God bless you, friends. We'll see you again, hopefully, tomorrow, if the Lord permits us. So please do uh, subscribe to our channel. Tell somebody about it. All right? And we'll see you again. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.